So let's take a look at um, the two sample hypothesis test with independent samples, uh, specifically with dealing with the difference between the population means mu1 and mu2. So we have two uh, populations, population one and population two, and we're trying to talk about the potential difference in the means of those populations. Okay, so we're going to call mu1 the popular the mean from population one, mu2 the mean from population two. So here are the three different varieties of these hypothesis tests we could be doing with two independent samples. All right. In this first case here, what we're saying is our null hypothesis is that mu1 equals mu2, or that their difference is zero, in other words. Um, and the alternative then is that mu1 is not equal to mu2. And this, just like before, the equals case is in the null hypothesis, and the not, the one that contains the not equals, is in the alternative. All right, and this would be our uh, two tail uh, version. Okay, in this case, what we're doing is we're saying that the null hypothesis says that mu1 is less than or equal to mu2. And therefore, the alternative hypothesis says that mu1 is greater than mu2. And this one with the alternative being mu1 greater than mu2, um, this is a right tail. Or in other words, think about it as mu1 minus mu2 is greater than zero. And then finally, in this case here, the null hypothesis is that mu1 is greater than or equal to mu2, and the alternative is that mu1 is less than mu2, and this would be a left tail. All right, now, just like with when we did the one sample, the assumption in the hypothesis test is going to be that um, the equality exists. So before in the one sample, we were saying that the mean takes on some value, and that was the assumption. That's why the equals was in the null hypothesis. Same thing here is we're going to, so regardless of which hypothesis test you use, you always assume there is no difference between the population means, or in other words, that mu1 equals mu2, and then you make your uh, results off of what you find. So, so what we're talking about here is a two-sample t-test for independent samples. All right, so what are the things we need? Uh, whoops, that would should be sigma one and sigma two are unknown. The population variances are unknown. And that's leading us to t-test here, because when uh, the variances, population variances are unknown, we're led to the t-test. Uh, the samples have to be random, the samples have to be independent for what we're doing here, and the populations are normally distributed, or both sample sizes are at least 30. Okay. So again, what we need to know if we're doing um, a t-test, or any type of test really, is what is the uh, test statistic Yeah, which this should really say test <laughs> statistics. Sorry for the errors here. Statistic <laughs> uh, is uh, x1 bar minus x2 bar. So the difference in the sample means. All right, we have two sample means, and what we're really looking at is what the difference in those sample means are. So that's the test statistic. All right, but obviously, just like before, we don't work directly in that test statistic. We use a standardized version, and that, in this case, is the t. So in this case, the t is going to be the value of that test statistic minus uh, the mu1 minus mu2, so the difference in the means of the population, over the standard error of the distribution, the sampling distribution. Now, that's going to be an interesting calculation because we're doing using uh, two different populations, so the question is going to be 
Uh, how do we find that uh, sampling, uh, standard error of the sampling distribution? Before, it was always some um, uh, s over uh, the square root of n, um, but now we have to incorporate two different populations in here, and that's where an important consideration comes in. Are the population variances equal? So the idea is that even though we don't know the population variances, we want to decide or be led to a decision as to whether or not the population variances are equal uh, or they're not equal. That's going to have a big effect on how we get that standard error. Okay, so in fact, the standard error of the sampling distribution is going to be calculated in a slightly different way depending on whether the population variances are equal or not. If the population variances are equal, then you would actually calculate the standard error for the sampling distribution of this difference, of so this quantity here, by this whole mess. Okay. And in this case, again, we're dealing with the t distribution, so we need to know um, the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom would be n1 plus n2 minus 2. So the combined sum of the sample size is minus 2, um, which is not surprising. It's basically n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1, so you get n1 plus n2 minus uh, 1. Okay minus two, sorry. <laughs> and so this is a pretty um, intimidating calculation. Uh, so not to worry, uh, we're going to be using technology to figure these things out and not doing direct calculations on that. If the variances are not equal, then your standard error of your sampling distribution is calculated in this way. Again, notice both of them are dependent on what the individual um, standard deviations of the samples are, but, may, but uh, proportioned in some way according to the sizes of each sample. All right. Now, in the case where the variances are not equal, the degree of freedom is actually the smaller of n1 minus 2 or n, n1 minus 1 or n2 minus 1. So whichever sample size is smaller, the degree of freedom will be that sample size minus 1. Okay, so how is it going to work? Very similar structure to any of the hypothesis tests we've done before. Um, we want to verify that these population variances are unknown, hence t-test. The samples are random, we always need that, independent in this case, and either the populations are normally distributed or um, both of the sample sizes are at least 30. So, as usual with any hypothesis test, we want to identify the null and alternative hypotheses, figure out which one is the claim. Determine the type of test. Is it left tail? right tail or two tail, and make note of the uh, level of significance alpha. Determine the degrees of freedom. Again, that's going to depend on whether we have equal variances or not. If it's equal variances, then it's n1 plus n2 minus 2. If not, then it's the smaller of n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1. Then we calculate our standardized test statistic t. We're going to use technology to do that when we get to there. Determine the p-value from that t. We can also nicely use some technology for that. Then we're going to make a decision. Again, same decision-making standards. If the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, we'll reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than alpha, we'll fail to reject the null hypothesis just like before on the decision making. And then we'll interpret the decision in the context of the original claim. Still the same idea. 
If the claim is in the null is the null hypothesis, then we're going to be in a rejection mode, and we'll make our determination whether we have enough evidence to reject the claim, or whether we don't have enough evidence uh, to reject the claim. If instead the claim is in the alternative hypothesis, then we're in a support mode, and we'll figure out whether we have enough evidence to support the claim, or we don't have enough evidence to support the claim.